certainly with the coronavirus, there's lots of topics that we could talk about. <laughs> yeah. Faith and faithfulness and fear and peace and our need to be prepared for the Lord's return. Yeah. Comforts in the sovereignty of God. There's the, it said the Lord let me go to Ephesians chapter 2 today. Ephesians chapter 2, I really just kind of like to start going down through the chapter and we'll see how far we get. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in word of prayer before we begin. And the Father, we do thank you for this day, Lord, and this privilege and opportunity to worship thee with thy people today, Lord. I pray we would not take it for granted, Lord, but rather we would be desirous to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I pray that you would stir us up as your people, Lord. I pray that you would bless now as we look into thy word. I pray that you might even be pleased to save souls among us, Lord. I pray you might bless the hearts of those who are listening over the internet, Lord. I pray for those churches that aren't able to meet together, that you might let this thing pass that's going on, Lord. That we yes, may Lord. Be able to be back busy about the work you call us to do, Lord. I pray that you would just help us be faithful to thee, no matter what circumstances may arise around us, Lord. We thank you for Christ and his sacrifice and thy great faithfulness towards us. In the name of Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, here the Apostle Paul starts Ephesians 2 with, And you have to be quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. I know <clears throat> this chapter, a lot of it is familiar verses to us. Uh, <clears throat> Probably one of my favorite chapters, along with Romans chapter 8. Yeah. But here he says, You have to be quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. We, before we were saved, we were dead in trespasses and sins. Spiritually, we had no life within us. Amen. Amen. Well, that's not necessarily a popular teaching today, but well, the dead man can't do anything for himself, can he? Amen. All right. well, let's go over to 1 Corinthians 15. There's a lot we could talk about in that chapter as well. 1 Corinthians 15. Where he talks about the resurrection of Christ, the beginning of the chapter, and he ends with the chapter with our resurrection at the second coming. Amen. But verse, let's notice verse 45. Here it says, And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Verse 47, the, the first man is of the earth, the earth of the second man is the Lord from heaven. First Adam was Adam, of course, from Genesis, and second Adam was Christ. Amen. It says he was made a quickening soul, of, or a quickening spirit. It was through Christ that we have spiritual life. Amen. Not through anything of ourselves that we do. Well, again, in John chapter 5, we can turn there for a moment. John chapter 5, verse... 21 says, For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. When Christ quickens or makes alive those whom he will, doesn't he? That's it. Well, that doesn't sound in line with modern teaching today, does it? Right. He just wants to quicken, he just wants to save everyone, and it's just up to you to make a decision or give them your heart or whatever foolishness they say. Right. But here, Christ himself finally says he quickens whom he will. That's it. Amen. But you have to quicken who are dead in trespasses and sins. That's another problem with many modern quote-unquote gospels today. They leave out that we were dead in trespasses and sins. That's it. Amen. That sin is the problem. Not, certainly hell is the destination of the unbeliever if they die in their sins. You know, eternity is separate and apart from God, as Brother Junior was talking about. But the problem, the original problem, is not hell itself, it's sin. Amen. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what 
As Romans 3.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Right. Yeah. Sin is where it all begins. Amen. That's the, the remedy that needs to be fixed, if you will. The problem that needs to be cured, and that can't come from anything with us, within us. It can't come from our good works. It can't come from our being a good person or being baptized. It must come through the person of Christ. Amen. So on verse 2, it says, Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that not worketh from the children of disobedience. Notice it says in times past. For the child of God, we aren't to be walking according to this course anymore. Amen. We shouldn't be walking according to this world. What does the scripture say? Be not conformed to the image of this world, be transformed by the remembrance. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 1. Verse 3 says, Among whom also we all have had our conversation in times past. Notice again that same wording in times past. Mm -hmm. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's the natural state of man, that we walk according to the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. He said, they were by nature the children of wrath. You know, Brother Junior read that passage said, There is none good, no, not one. Right. Yeah. No man is ever desiring to fill the lusts and desires of the flesh. Right. The natural man has no desire to do that which is good. So they may follow after that which their mama taught them, but mm -hmm. that's about as far as their morality goes. They have no real desire to serve God and please God. Yeah. We see that really ever so present in this current situation we have. Everyone's supporting up for themselves, things for their own good. Amen. And when you see pictures of the elderly trying to go get their just their daily needs and they can't even get them because they're still on the bottom yeah. all up. Yeah. Right? Man is self seeking. When he Amen. Gets down to it. Amen. So it ought not to be so for the child of God. That should be us in times past, as he says here. But we are a new creature in Christ. So we'll get to down in verse 10. Verse 4, let's notice, especially these first two words, but God. Amen. You have to always pay attention when it says, but God. Mm -hmm. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us. And we could spend a lot of time just speaking on the love of God. Amen. It says here, his great love wherewith he loved us. <clears throat> well, certainly that is past our understanding, our love of God. He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son to die for us. Yes. To be the propitiation for our sins. Amen. To pay the penalty for us. Yet, I think it's still past our understanding even that. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, continuing on with about his love, he says, even when we were dead in sins, that quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. Amen. Because of his great love, he has quickened us or made us alive with Christ. He says, even when we were dead in sins. You know, there's a, a saying that goes around that often uh, attributed to the Bible. It says that God helps those who help themselves, but you won't find that anywhere in the Bible. You're right. Oh, God helps those who can't help themselves, doesn't it? Great. Amen. The dead man can't help himself. The dead man can't call out to God. But we were at enmity with him, and yet Amen. Christ died for us. Romans 5 tells us this very plainly. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. Here the Apostle Paul again writing and says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. But while we were yet transgressing and breaking his law, Christ died for us. Amen. 
You know, it wasn't that we had to get to a good enough state and then he would save us. No, we were sinners. We were the, really, as we stand before God, the wickedest we could be. Amen. Christ died for us. God, in his great love and mercy, gave us spiritual life. Amen. But God, who is rich in mercy and for his love, worth and love us even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. So he didn't just give us spiritual life and leave us out there to be, but he said he quickened us together with Christ. So our life, new life, really is in Christ. Isn't it? It's not Amen. in this old flesh. You know, we still live with life in this flesh, but yet all that we have in Christ is a great blessing to think on. Amen. In another place, Paul said, the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. So verse 6 says, not only did he quicken us together with Christ, he said that he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. You, know, the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but to me it seems the most heavenly place on this earth would be right here in the Lord's church. Amen. Oh, but one day we will dwell forever in his presence. What a joyous thought that I would be for the child of God. Amen. And that goes along really with our next verse. It says that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Oh, the glory that awaits us in the ages to come. Amen. Yeah. So a few verses I'm sure we're all familiar with. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17 tells us that God will... <coughs> At the last trump, we will raise the dead in Christ first, and then we which are alive shall be called to meet them in the air. Amen. So shall we ever be with the Lord, he says. So 1 Corinthians 15, Let's go back there for a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. Speaking of the catching away, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, mortal must put on immortality. We're going to read verse 54 as well. So then when, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought fast the saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. So that will be the fulfillment fully of verses 6 and 7. That we'll be together in heavenly places with Christ. And throughout the season's ages, he'll show his exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness Amen. toward us. In Romans 8, verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory which Amen. will be revealed in us. The glory that awaits the child of God is a really an overwhelming thought, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Past our, at least my finite comprehension, well, it ought to be a, a joyous thought to the child of God that this life is not all there is, that this life is not the best there is. As Mr. Osteen says, it's not our best life now. <laughs> our best life is yet to come for the child of God. Amen. Let's go on to verse number 8 here. I'm sure this one's familiar for us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves is the gift of God. Amen. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, certainly salvation is by grace, isn't it? He says here, it's not of works. What's by grace and nothing else? It's not grace plus works. It's not grace plus penance, as the Catholics call it. It's not Grace plus the sacraments is not. Amen. Grace plus anything else is simply but by the grace of God. And he says through faith. That faith is the avenue which he brings salvation. So all men have not faith, as Paul wrote. Right. Second Thessalonians 3 2. So 
faith is the gift of God, isn't it? Amen. Else, uh, I don't think disciples would have been able to say, Lord, increase our faith, but they had power in themselves to increase it. That's it, amen. So, Romans 6.23 tells us that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's go over to Romans for a moment. Romans chapter 3. I thought Brother Junior was going to get on this point. <laughs> Romans 3, we'll go down to verse 20. And Brother Junior spoke of about that verse in chapter 6, Romans, for the way of sin is death, the gift of God, the eternal life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Certainly that is what we deserve to go death. That's what we have earned, as he said. Amen. But oh, for the grace of God. You know, the grace of God can't be earned. There would be no more grace. In fact, that's what Paul wrote in another place in Romans. He says, Amen. If it is of works, it's no more grace. If it's grace, it's of no more works. Romans 3, verse 20 says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The good works can't save him. Amen. Amen. They couldn't save back then. They still can't save today. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't have good works, as we'll see in a moment. But in and of themselves, the deeds of the law, good works, whatever you want to call them, they cannot justify us before our God. It says, but Paul says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. If anything, the law shows us how great a sinner we really are. As he says to the Galatians, it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It showed us our need for a Savior more than, way more than it showed us how good a person we were. Amen. Verse 21 says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law of the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and all, and upon all that of them that believe, for there is no difference. This is the righteousness which we must have before God. But Amen. That which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So Paul said that he desired not to be found having his own righteousness, but to have the righteousness which is of God by faith of Jesus Christ. For if we stand before God in our own righteousness, we'll realize that we were fall far short. Over the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ, that is the only one that is acceptable in this sight. That's the only one that's without sin. Verse 23 says, For all of sinning come short of the glory of God. That's it. And though there's, no, there's none that have lived the perfect life, there's none that have lived without sin, as much as some would like to think they have. Right. We've sinned in the littlest, we've sinned in the greatest. That's it. I think it was James that wrote, if you've broken the least of the commandments, you're guilty of all. So no, we might not be as quote unquote bad as Hitler was. Right. But really we're just as wicked in the heart. You are right. Amen. Yeah. If the grace and mercy of God were removed from us, we would just we would do just as wicked and heinous acts as he did. Amen. Verse 24 says, Being justified fully by his grace of the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> See, it's God that's the justifier, isn't it? Verse 20. Seven says, where is boasting then? Mm -hmm. It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Mm -hmm. If man, back in our text there, not, verse 9, it said, not of works the same man should boast. If it was of works, man would boast about it, wouldn't he? Yep. Paul says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. Faith excludes any boasting on the part of man. That's Probably why man doesn't like it so much. Right. Well, he wants something to do about it. He wants to have something that he has earned, if you will, something that he can say, look at me, look what I have done. Mm -hmm. Well, but grace 
and faith, they give all the glory back to God. That's it. Luke in verse 28 says, Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. As far as salvation is concerned, our good works mean nothing. Amen. As far as salvation is concerned, keeping the law could do us no good, but simply by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't mean we should just forget about good works. Right. So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God, or Paul asks, I say, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Yeah. And that leads us into verse number 10 of chapter 2 here in Ephesians. He says, For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus, unto good works, but God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. If we truly have been born again, St. Corinthians tells us we are a new creature. Amen. St. Corinthians 5 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah. But I know we still live in this flesh. We'll still have to deal with sin. But if there hasn't been a radical change in your life, then right. I would wonder if you truly experienced the grace of God. That's it. Amen. You no, know, contrary to some teachings, I don't think you can be saved and not know it. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you couldn't know it. Amen. Oh, well, he makes us a new creature, he says. And he says we're created unto good works. A new man's whole purpose is to bear good fruit to God. In fact, first John tells us that new man cannot sin, for his seed remaineth in him. That's a whole other topic we can get on to the new man and its purpose, its function, its characteristics. But the new man is much different than the old man. Amen. <clears throat> it says, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We should be walking in good works as a child of God. Amen. We shouldn't, as it says back in verse 2, be walking according to the course of this world. Oh, we ought to, as John says in verse John, be walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen. We can't walk in darkness and have, expect to have fellowship with God. We can't walk after the course of this world and expect God to bless. Amen. Go on to verse 11 and 12. Here Paul changes course a little bit and goes backwards again. He says, Wherefore remember that ye be in, in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hand. We were in times past. He's, once again, he says that times past again. Amen. He says Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. You know, physically speaking, we are Gentiles. I don't think any of us have Jewish heritage. Or we could, I guess, but we don't know about it. But right. We are not of the nation of Israel. That's it. Amen. And until the Christ came, we had, didn't have a whole lot of hope, did we? Amen. There are a few Gentiles saved in the Old Testament, but they're far and few between. Mm -hmm. but no verse 12 says that at the time, or that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, the strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. So is the state of every unbeliever still today. Amen. Those really are sobering words to think about. At that time, you were without Christ, he said. We were without, outside of Christ, if you will. We had no part in Christ. That's a hopeless state to be in, without Christ. Amen. So being without Christ, and see where we were being, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We, had no part with the people of God at that time. Did Amen. <clears throat> we were strangers from the, the promises. We had no claim to them. We had no right to them. If you remember in Christ's ministry, oftentimes they say we are of Abraham. Or mm -hmm. Abraham was our father. Mm -hmm. He was a Jew they could claim that. They could 
claimed they had the right to these things. Yeah. There was advantages, Brother Junior read about, to being a Jew. Mm -hmm. But in times past, we were aliens from that. We were not citizens or we were not, had no fellowship with God and his people. He said, then strangers from the covenants of promise. We had no, we were really estranged, if you will, from the promises of God. We had no claim to them. Right. He said, then having no hope, oh, what a sad situation to be in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No hope. No. That doesn't mean a little bit of hope. But no, there's, outside of Christ, there is no hope at all. Nah. There's not any hope in Muhammad or Buddha or any of these right. others. Outside of Christ, there is, we are completely hopeless and desperate. Oh, I was, Brother Christopher was preaching back at Fellowship in Olmstead. He was talking about the hope that we have as believers. Amen. That really kind of got me thinking on this verse, how that the unbeliever has absolutely no hope. I have no hope and without God in the world. That last phrase ought to be probably the most sobering of them all, without God. Mm -hmm. To be without God is to be without anything. It really doesn't matter if we have the whole world if we don't have God. Right. It doesn't matter if we have all the riches of this world, if we have, and we could be a quote unquote church member, we could have good works, we could have godly parents, grandparents, we could attend the services every time the doors open, we could have all these things, we could be highly esteemed among men, but yet if we're without God, we're nothing. Amen. We are without God in this world. You know, for the child of God, our, our time without God was only for a little while in this world, wasn't it? But for those that die in their sins, their time without God will be for all of eternity. Amen. As Brother Junior mentioned, that death that comes with sin, that's separation from God for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. well, for the child of God, we have a new world waiting for us. We're in both righteousness. Well, this present evil world will pass away one day. And by the looks of things around us, it might be coming very soon. Amen. Oh, but we ought not to pray as the ch children of God. We ought to be joyous that that new world is coming. That, Amen. That one that Peter says, we're in dwells righteousness. Where sin will no longer touch us. Amen. Satan will be banished. Amen. That's what awaits the child of God. So Paul doesn't leave off though with here saying that so we were without Christ, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, we were strangers from the covenants of promise, we had no hope and we were without God. But he says in verse 13, but now, Amen. in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. So we were afar off, we were at a great distance from God, yet he has drawn us close to him by the blood of Christ. Amen. For those that aren't saved here today, to Christ and his blood is all I can point you to. Because yeah. you are without Christ, you're without God, you're without hope. Yet Christ and his blood can draw you not me. Amen. Verse 14 says, For he is our peace who has made both one and have broken down the middle wall partition between us. <clears throat> in Christ there is great peace. Isn't there is a peace which passes understanding Paul wrote in another place. Yeah. Really to have peace with God means that, we, means that we're at one with him. Formerly we were at enmity with him. We were at odds with him. We were literally the enemy of the great God Jehovah. That's it. Amen. Yet now Christ has made us at one with him. He's given us peace with God. Amen. And it says that broken down the middle wall partition between us. Amen. Well, there was, if you will, that 
a middle wall between us, a wall which we couldn't penetrate. Verse 15 says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace. I believe they're referring back to the, the law here, if you will. But, you know, in the law, we can never become one with God. Right. Well, even those who were as faithful to keep the law as they could, and they still had to have the sacrifices and roll their sins over for a time, yet that could not make us one with Christ. That could not make us one with God. Amen. Hence why the Lazarus bosom, as we call it, mm -hmm. was, they were down there looking across the great gulf except the, those in hell. There was still a, as he calls it here, a middle wall partition between us. Oh, but Christ broke that down. Amen. Both figuratively and literally. Mm -hmm. If you recall in the gospel when Christ was crucified, it said the veil of the temple was rent. Amen. It said it was rent from top to bottom. Right. God himself tore it in two. Amen. So I don't know how the quote unquote law keepers get around in this particular passage of scripture among others. Right. But Christ abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. <clears throat> well, if it was still up to us to keep the law, then we would see that none of us would be able to be justified. Amen. Well, we know in Christ we are justified. In Christ, God <coughs> justifies those who come to him by faith. And he says he did this for to make himself a twain, one new man, so making peace. By getting rid of that, he was able to make us one with him. Verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Amen. He came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were nigh. Amen. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And now we have access to God Himself. Amen. We have access unto the the throne of mercy, if you will. That's what he's saying in Hebrews, that we have, we can go to him to get help in time of need. Amen. We don't have to go through the priest or the... That's it. We don't have to go through the Pope. We don't have to go through any of these, but we can go directly to God through the Spirit in Christ, who is our mediator. Now therefore ye, verse 19, are no more strangers and foreigners, but well, fellow citizens of the saints and the household of God. Amen. Well, we've been born again. We're not strangers anymore. We're not, certainly we're pilgrims in this world, but we're not a foreigner to God and his people. Amen. You know, it says we're fellow citizens of the saints and the household of God. And the saints, that's all the saints. It's not just the ones who... Catholic Church thinks they're special. Right. So if you've been born again, you're called a saint by the word of God. That's it. Amen. That's a, a called out one, a, a separate one, if you will. That's what it means to be a saint. Mm -hmm. Not that we're any more holy or righteous than any others. But really, in Christ, we have his righteousness. We have his holiness. And fellow citizens of the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Notice what their foundation was. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. So if our foundation is anything, starts on anything other than Christ, then we are doomed to fail. Right. We're as one building upon the sand. We might appear to be a mighty building before men. We might appear to be something Spectacular, but one day it'll fall down. That's it. Verse 21 In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto the holy temple in the Lord, in whom also we are built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. Do Paul begins this chapter with how we were dead and sins when he ends with all that we have in Christ, all the, the new 
all that the believer enjoys now that they've been born again. Amen. So left to ourselves, we are most helpless, aren't we? We're most hopeless. Oh, but what glory we have in God now. Mm -hmm. So for those that aren't born again, all they do is, like I said again, point you to Christ. Mm -hmm. Believe on Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. The Apostle Paul told the Philippian jailer, don't trust in yourselves, your own good works, your baptism, your church membership, your yeah. parents, grandparents, that you paid the priest enough money, whatever. Mm -hmm. It may be all these different theories abound. You have the sinner's prayer, you have the repeat this after me, salvation. It's a, it was one song said, don't give me that hope so, maybe so, think so, salvation. Amen. So in Christ we can have a hope that is steadfast and sure. In Christ we can be assured that we will stand before God righteous one day. But trust in any other things, you'll be sorely disappointed when you stand before him. So we can be sure that we all will stand before him one day. And as the scripture says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. Christ is Lord. So there won't be a good, good old party down in hell like some believe. That's it. There will be that weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. That constant reminder that we are separate from God. And hope with the child of God, what glory awaits. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I don't know exactly what heaven will be like. I'm sure it's not quite like many people have supposed it will be. I don't think there's going to be very much earthly pleasures. or Right. But I know we'll be in the presence of God for all eternity. You know, besides that, nothing else should really matter, should it? That's it. Let's go ahead and close with that thought. Yeah, man.